We're on a path. You, me, every human being to ever walk the earth. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you do, we're on a path. You can't help it. You can't change it. You can't avoid it. Whether your road is paved with water and sand, riches or struggle, urban towers or caravans, the moment you're in the womb, you're on a path. A path called life, leading to land unknown until you can't help but know whether you've ended up in one of two places. But all I know is that this messed up earth is not our final destination. It's not our final home. That's right. The journey don't stop here even after we've returned to dust. We've got a promise of eternity. Keep in mind, I've said promise, not assurance. We'll get onto that later. Eternity, nothing like how we're doing life here with all the sickness and gossip, global warming and slavery, selfishness and isolation. A promise of doing life good with our good, good father and goodies beyond comprehension. I'm talking about life where the sun don't shine, but daylight never disappears. Food richer than chocolate torts, more nourishment than milk and honey, and water fresher than cold vulvic. Where there's no more bad or sad to weigh us down, so happiness fills the atmosphere like glitter. Hair flies flung, hair flies on heads flung, left to right, jumping and laughing, more joyous than little children let loose to play for the first time. I don't know about you, but that makes my heart leap, hallelujah, shackles loose so I can dance. Who wants to be chained to this earth forever? with all the potholes of pain, my eyes be leaking on a regular. And forever having to watch your back, cause the devil works overtime, without rest, stalking along the path. He is that determined to get every one of us caught in his wrath. Pathetic, really. But I guess he has nothing better to do. So let's not get dragged down with him into his bitter little hole. Instead, we move. We move. Even when the Red Sea is raging relentless and fast, grief might be crashing, betrayal sweeping you away, financial struggles got you drowning. It may be hazardous, hurtful, but you won't be alone, it's why you can find peace in the storm. God is right there, parting the sea in two with his miraculous hand, revealing a yellow brick road shining just for you. Trust he'll calm the waters. Wash away every trial, get you back on track to keep journeying on. When you're weak, that's when he is strong. He'll never leave you or forsake you. It's not who he is. He loves you way, way too much. It helps that he actually is love too. Also that his word is true. He's not a man that he should lie or like the devil who drowned you in dishonesty then claim he tried to save your life. I'll put my two pence in and vouch for God. For my God, not that he needs it, but I couldn't let this moment pass and not tell you that he's never 
left my side. Not once, not ever, even when I've gone my own way, because I believed it was best or wandered into temptation and mistakes, believing my little lone self could handle big, bad Satan. You know who I'm sure could vouch for him too? The Israelites. If they would only stop complaining, acknowledge he never stopped being there through their long journey and endless mistakes, fulfilling every one of their requests but let's move away from any negative examples they may have set. Let's focus on scattering plenty of love, planting seeds of empathy watered with kindness and fed with hope. Planting praise along our roads, flowers of God's mercy and goodness blooming for all to see, replacing dying grass trampled in despair. A colorful reminder to cheer our days and days of others, point them towards the beauty of our promised home, where there'll be no more sorrow, endless lights and lambs laying down with lions. We don't want anyone to miss out on the blessings, especially when they're free. God stays giving them away, the main gift being Jesus. Accepting his sacrifice will get you a key to the kingdom. No time to waste. We can't sit still, so we move. We move in love. Because love really does make the world go round. It's not some naive cliche. Love keeps us breathing. If it wasn't for God's love, we'd drop dead the moment that we sinned. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just being real. Love means honesty after all. Jesus would have kept it real. I'm just trying to walk in his example. And if you remember, God is love, and he can't lie. Let me know if you're connecting the dots. Drop it in the chat. Anyway, we move in love because we love Jesus and because we know him. Since knowing him is life-changingly great, leading to blessings on blessings, We want others to know him too and experience those same blessings. Moving in love shows Jesus, which is vital along the path because we may be the only Jesus someone sees as our roads cross. We don't want anyone walking away from us thinking Jesus was judgmental or cruel more concerned with metal in their ears or the way they smelled than their character or struggles. Jesus accepts all for who they are, meeting them at the point of their need, making them feel that they truly matter. Most important, Jesus is the only way on this path to heaven. He is the truth, and the life sacrificing his own for your salvation. I'm going to say it again, because this is the foundation of everything, and I don't want you to miss it. Jesus is the only way on this path to heaven. He is the truth and the life sacrificing his own own for your salvation. My church family, I'm talking to you, just you, only for a moment. We've got to stop obstructing, 
Too often we're helping the devil with his work packaged in what we label best intentions. Can we make a vow to stop that right now? Stop being a stumbling block that leads to some dropping their keys to mansions and encourage the devil's cheering because his key is already lost. Sometimes it's best to close our mouths, swallow our opinions, give way for our ears to open and take in the lamentations of others hopefully opening their eyes to Christ a step closer to salvation. We need to make a clearing for new beginnings because all of us have fallen short. Let Jesus work through us, uniting us to move in unison so we can help anyone who's fallen to dust themselves off and get back up. Okay, moment over. I'm back to everyone as a whole now. Stay alert. Stay woke. Satan is moving mad because he knows his time is short. Leaving traps along the path, playing sadistic games like he stepped out of saw. He tripped up Judas. Tripped up Aaron. Every month, I'm forced to remember that he tripped up Eve. Out to take our salvation, our new home, our lives, because he got consumed with himself. Trying to peck out our eyes, leave us scrambling blinds, forgetting we walk by faith and not by sight. We're backed up and covered by a God who will take us to safety, whether in this life or the next. That's why on that great day, I don't know about you, but I'm sprinting into God's arms faster than Usain Bolt on his best day, then into the arms of Jesus immediately after. Then I'll be running around like it's a victory lap. Reuniting with who I've long loved and missed. Tightly hugging my granddad, Auntie Joss, Uncle Dale, Uncle Clifford, Uncle Jim, Uncle Lloyd, Charles, and so many more. We'll be living it up at the reunion to rival all reunions, more unforgettable than any high schools or HBCU. A celebration sweeter than chocolate from a red box gone in seconds, the party to end all parties, nourishing nectar for the soul. As highlighter pink and lemon yellow streamers rain from candy floss clouds. From dried hearts to this fountain of love, it's a blessing that we move. We move in preparation. You can't reach on it. Don't worry. This preparation is the easiest in history. No need to panic. No hours of studying. No grabbing cattle and children. No full face of makeup. No need for a shape up. You only need to ready yourself, your heart, mind, and soul. And you don't even have to do it alone. There is a whole team and toolkits ready and waiting for you. 
There's the Holy Spirit, your comforter and guide, the life of Jesus, the constant reference. The Bible is your roadmap for every direction and God, he'll equip you with everything you need. It's a marathon, not a sprint, so don't rush the process or overlook the progress. None of us will be perfect here anyway, that's a fact. It's about you growing into better day by day. And you will get better. You will get stronger. God will do greatness through you. I, again, can vouch for that, with how far he's taken me as a leader, creative, and overcomer of a woman in the past six or seven years. So can Moses, who had to speak up in Egypt, then lead them moaning Israelites. In spite of a stutter, and intense issues of anger. Look at him now, living it up in the ultimate promised land, one of the few humans already doing life with God in heaven. That greatness will ripple into the lives of others as our roads converge. It's important we make that meeting as soothing as possible, connecting to support each other in our growth. Making the path simple with all that love, following the breadcrumbs Jesus left behind. He showed up for women, for criminals, for children, for disabled, all those labelled society's outcasts. He never ghosted, ignored, shamed, or saw people as labels. He saw them only as human beings. Not just human beings, but brothers, sisters, mothers, all family he wants to welcome home. If Jesus saw every person as family, shouldn't we, as the church, see them the same? Shouldn't we want them to know him? Whether they are gay, criminal, homeless, anyone who makes us uncomfortable or we don't understand. It's up to us who know him to be supporting, reassuring, praying for each other through the plagues of life. Reaching out, welcoming in those from the cold with a hot cup of smiles and hearty assurance that this is a family where healing can be found. Not hiding, that there will be cracks and friction because we're all flawed, but we're united in love by Christ's blood. United, doing life together in the sweet, sweet incense of God's promises, hope and joy that gets us through. A comforting constant in time that seems long to us, but it's only a second for him. Wondering why we are still wandering in the desert, waiting for him to come and take us home when we've heard that he is coming soon, way more than 40 years long. That's where faith comes in, especially when we have no idea what's going on. We keep trusting, keep hoping, keep believing in the evidence of things not seen, 
we can be sure that as God fulfilled the promise of Canaan to the Israelites and fulfilled the promise of salvation in Jesus' sacrifice, God will fulfill his promise to us. He'll take us home to paradise, perfection, and bountiful bliss if we return to him through Jesus. Paradise. With more rejoicing than the Israelites after the exodus, we'll dance and sing a hundred times more jubilant than Miriam. Bliss in shaking of tambourines and banging cymbals, bringing to life the ultimate anthem that no angel can sing because we've made it through the wilderness to our promised home, escaped bondage of sin. But the reality is, he's waiting, waiting for every ear to hear about him. He's a God of chances, and he wants those who were lost to have the chance to find their way to him. He wants no soul to miss out on the gifts of Jesus and a home in heaven. If we want every ear to hear about him, You know what to do, we move. We move to God's promise fulfilled. From when Jesus said, it is finished completing salvation on the cross to when Jesus says, well done, completing earth's history and our path to start a new story in our new home that will never have an end. Strolling along streets of gold, no raging Red Sea, exploring galaxies beyond our eyesight, All those questions we've long replayed, finally answered. Death defeated forever and salty water permanently cleared from our reddened eyes. Settling into mansions, Jesus left to prepare. Every one of us join heirs because we're children of the King. But if you want to do life with him in heaven, you've got to do life with him on earth. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the deposit, mortgage, all the bills to get the key. The one condition is you actually accepting him. Accepting him into your hearts, all the way into your life, but it has to be you who invites him in. He won't force his way through the door, that never paves the way for anything genuine. It just starts with one step, saying you believe. Start simple, start slow, start the way you know. We're all on our individual journeys. Though, you can't go wrong with a focus on Jesus, faith as your guide, and the Holy Spirit as your comforter. Remember, the Bible is a roadmap to help you on the way, and we're here for extra help if you find reading a map a little tricky. And don't worry if you fall along the way. Jesus is right there willing you to get back up, never running out of chances or plasters. He'll heal all your wounds. He's gentle and patient, firm but fair, 
and he never, ever gives up. He's never let me go or given up on me even when I've given up on myself. He's got me back on track when I've lost my way, then led me somewhere better paved. He's taught me, keeps teaching me how to love and has transformed my heart. He saved me more times than I can count. Without him, there'd be no meaning in life. All he's done for me, he can do for you and more. I don't want you to miss out or have regret by not taking that first step or the next step, the new step, any step that brings you close to Jesus and his amazing love. The only way to make it along this path called life, please don't miss this chance. Tomorrow is not promised, which I don't say to scare you. I say it because I love you. Every one of you are my brothers and sisters in Christ. It breaks my heart to think about celebrating at that reunion without you. All you've got to do is say yes. Take that step to Jesus who will take you to greatness beyond your wildest dreams. Whether it's here on this earth or once he's returned to take you home to the next. As you get to know him, the relationship will become easier than you know. And we'll be here along the way. I can definitely vouch for myself. None of us can make it alone. That's not how God made us. Why else would he make Eve for Adam in the original perfect home? Even Moses had Aaron. And even Jesus... He had Peter, James, and John. Coming home means doing life together on this path, no matter how rough and rocky it may be. Preparing for doing life together when we ascend high to that ultimate homecoming beyond the skies where we can find peace, and finally, be still. But until that great day comes to pass, we move. Lord, I just love you. I love you so much. I could say that so many times, I could say I love you, I could say thank you, I could say hallelujah, and it would never, ever, ever be enough. Thank you for this Sabbath day, for the sunshine, I see you smiling at me and I thank you for that. Thank you for this word, Lord. You know the struggle I had to write this. You know how much time and heart I put into this, Lord. You know this is the most important piece of spoken word I have ever written in my life. And I thank you for being there with me. Holy Spirit, I thank you for guiding me, help me to figure out the words, figure out the flow, figure out that things that were not working. Thank you for this word that you've put into my heart, put into my mouth, Lord. And I pray that everyone who has heard it, who has watched it, will have been moved, will have felt something in their hearts, will have known just even a bit more about you. And I pray that there will be at least, at least one person out there taking that step to you, Jesus. 
taking that step to saying yes, taking that step to say they believe, taking that new step, whether they've stepped away back to you, taking a step to re-evaluate the relationship with you, taking that step to they love you even more, taking that step to change their hearts and think about how they've spoken to others. Lord, just let there be many, many steps being taken right now that will bring others to you so they don't miss out on the wonderful keys to the kingdom, Lord, because you've got amazingness in store. And even the little things I said don't even touch that. It doesn't even touch to seeing you face to face, able to hug you face to face, see our loved ones again that we've lost, especially in this horrible time face to face. So we thank you for your hope. We thank you for joy. We thank you for the peace that you've given us. We thank you for the family you've blessed us with. Help us as the church to move in you, Holy Spirit, because this world this world is mad and this world needs us and this world, Jesus, needs you more than it has ever, ever needed you before. So Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for the gift you've blessed me with, Lord, because being able to be a poet, spoken word artist, it is not me. Lord, that is you. And I thank you for everything you've done for me, everything you're going to do going forward, all the miracles you're going to make because you're a God of miracles and I be trusting you wholeheartedly. Thank you for the gift of everyone in my life who supported me and everyone who's been part of this service. Everyone's going to be taking part in the concert later and for all these amazing young people that you've blessed with so many gifts and wonder. They are absolutely amazing and they continue to inspire me, inspire me always. So bless us for the rest of this Sabbath. Please keep the sun shining. Again, I love you. I thank you for everything and I will talk to you again soon. Amen. <laughs>